right, Happy New Year's at the time of this release. I hope you guys had great holidays and everything. I know I did. As a matter of fact, we'll have to do a video coming up showing some of the new little gadgets that I got. One thing that I also got for Christmas is this nice t-shirt from my friend JT over here at uh, JT Customs. Uh, he builds race cars and stuff like that. But more importantly, he is also the editor of 908 Motorsports Magazine. He discovered the channel recently. This is an e-zine. It's kind of like a, a car craft kind of magazine thing with a lot of uh, building stuff and some technical how-tos, things like that. Really, really a little different from CarCraft. That's a bad comparison. The writing, I think, is a lot better, and it's got like some life lesson stuff in there as well. A little easier read, you know, not just quite as dry. But he also wants to take some of the articles in a new direction and go a little bit more high tech and modern and technical. So looking forward to working with JT on some projects coming up. So. Uh, again, I will put a link to that in the description. Worth a look at, uh, to be honest. So the other thing we got to look at is this car over here. We've got a Honda Civic LX that actually I'm going to be doing a number of things to, all minor stuff and everything. As a matter of fact, one of them was replacing uh, headlight bulbs, which caused me to make a little bit of a screw up, but we'll get to that. The main thing for this video, though, is that we need to fix a cooling system issue. This car has a P0128 code. Well, it had one. I accidentally erased it when I did the headlights and removed the battery that is right in front of this high beam light here. And without thinking, of course, it erased the code before I started filming. I don't even know what I was thinking. But here's what's interesting about this P0128 code. The first thing that's interesting, wait, gotta make sure I got my JT Customs emblem in the shot there. All right, the first thing that's interesting is the code description. So the code description literally was, to the best of my memory, cooling system malfunction. That was, that was all that you get. You have no indication, is this like a incorrect temperature thing? Is this a fan's not coming on? Is this a thermostat rationality? There's literally no information on it. The second thing that is interesting is that a shop has already replaced the thermostat and both engine coolant temperature sensors. If you watch this channel for any length of time, you know that most cars have two engine coolant temperature sensors. There can be different logic for this. Typically, one of them is for the dashboard gauge, the temperature gauge in the dashboard, and the other one is for the PCM. Not always, though. Sometimes there is a rationality check between the two sensors. One may be uh, before the thermostat, one after the thermostat, and it can look at temperature change to see the thermostat's opening, for example, stuff like that. Um, there's different rationalities that you can have for the two sensors. But if the engine coolant temperature sensors have been changed and the thermostat has been changed, we are almost guaranteed going to have some kind of electrical problem. I can't imagine that the shop uh, didn't notice something like fans not coming on, something like that. Uh, and in that case, it would be overheating. My understanding is that the issue with this car is an overcooling situation. So fans being on all the time may be an issue, for example, when I pulled the car in uh, and was doing some other things, I did not notice anything where the fans were coming on at the wrong time or whatever. So I believe we're going to have some kind of electrical issue here. Should make for a good video. So the first thing that I wanna do, this is the first thing that I like to do anytime we've got some kind of temperature issues with a car, and that is I like to get a baseline. So what I've done is I've let the car sit overnight. It's a bit chilly in the garage. I've got the heat going right now here, but whatever the temperature is here, every temperature sensor in this car should be reading pretty much the same within just a few degrees of each other. So I think that's the first step that we're going to take. Let's get the scan tool on there and let's do a, I call it a temperature rationality check. And we're going to look and see if maybe one of the sensors or both is reading out of range from other sensors on the car that are all the same temperature. All right, while I'm waiting for my top Don to load, we can see we've got one engine coolant temperature sensor right there. And let's get a look here because it looks brand new to me. Yeah, that is clearly right there. That is clearly brand new. You can see the bright, shiny uh, copper on there. 
And then the other coolant temperature sensor will actually be on the radiator on this car. So we'll get a look at that once I get under the car. The first thing we want to do is get our data. All right, let's play the parts slot machine. This car already had the parts slot machine played with a new thermostat and the coolant temperature sensors. We're probably not getting overcooling. We're probably sensing overcooling from a faulty reading is what my guess is here based on the information I have. Okay, and uh, we're gonna go right to the PCM. That would be, let's see, power. Uh, that'll be here. Okay, and uh, one thing we could do, let's try reading the fault codes. Maybe uh, with the other stuff that I did, we've at least got a pending code. Uh, no trouble code. Okay, so I accidentally erased the code. That's all right though. Again, the code was totally useless. It just said cooling system malfunction. That was it. All right, so let's go to our data stream here and let's get engine coolant temp. Uh, let's see. Well, not there. Maybe it's under coolant temp. So one, one kind of nice thing with this top Don here, I can come up here to this little search box. More and more, this is a thing where you can have hundreds of different PIDs here and it's really hard to sift through them. So I'm just going to go here and I'm going to hit temp. And oh, the only thing, wait a minute, catalyst. Okay, well, there's got to be something with temperature here. What am I... Missing, let's try maybe in, no, the engine temp would have temp in it. All right, what is the, oh, okay, uh, I see what it is. It's ECT, engine coolant temperature, so they just use the abbreviations there. All right, so we're gonna do engine coolant sensor one and two, and then we also wanna have the, something like the IAT, uh, which will be a little different because I'm heating the garage now, so that's gonna heat up faster than the ECTs do, I believe. And then if there's something like a oil temp sensor, uh, there's oil pressure. If there's a transmission temp sensor, no, there isn't. So we'll just use the IAT and we'll take a comparison. All right, and we, yeah, we see our problem here right off the bat. We've got a good 15 degree difference between ECT one and two. These have been sitting overnight and uh, we also notice that they're vastly different than the IAT sensor. Now that is okay. I'm not worried about that because again, I'm heating up the garage. The IAT sensor by far and away is going to heat up a lot faster than the engine coolant temperature sensors will that are buried in the engine uh, and dipped in coolant here. So the thing is, is that both sensors are dipped in the same coolant that has been sitting overnight. They should read exactly the same and they do not. So this is the fault here. Now, again, both the ECTs have been changed and we still have this difference. So there is going to be some kind of an electrical problem and that will be what we chase down. All right, the first thing I wanna verify is ECT1 versus ECT2. So I'm just gonna tilt over here just a hair. All right, my guess is that this is gonna be ECT1 right here. I'm gonna to try to reach in here and unplug this. Yeah, you see when we unplug it, we go to minus 40 degrees, universal sign of an open circuit on a temperature sensor. I'm gonna snap that back in and we get back to our temperature there. Okay, so that means ECT2, uh, which I'm gonna say is the one that is incorrect because there's no way that it's 35 degrees. The 50 degrees, is, is far closer to what it should be. ECT2 is gonna be, I'm pretty sure, on the radiator on these cars. So let's take a look. All right, right away, I'm seeing a red flag here, actually. And that is, uh, oh, there it is right there. There's the ECT2 right by the stopcock here for the radiator drain. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's ECT2, but what my red flag is here is there is supposed to be a splash shield here, and it is missing the splash shield, which means this engine coolant temperature sensor, we can see it's wet right there. It's been snowing here in Denver quite a bit, and we can see it's wet. So we may just have a problem here at this connector, or, or maybe the sensor's bad. Well, wait a minute here. Let's take a look, because hold on. Okay, that sensor, 
I don't know if you can see that. This sensor has not been replaced. This sensor is absolutely old. That has not been replaced. So, um, but they replaced, they said they replaced both sensors. Let me just do this real quick. I'm going to first verify. This is definitely ECT2, but I just want to be sure. I want to unplug that. Let's look at our scan tool. Oh, and the fan comes right on. Okay. So, plug that back in. We get back to our temperature and I want to get some information here. All right, well, we do have some clues here in that the fact that we open that circuit, fans come on right away when it detects the open and stuff. Uh, that's telling me we've, we've got clear communication with the PCM and everything. This is going to be a bad engine coolant temperature sensor. The only other variable would be some type of issue with the connector, with it being wet like that. Uh, one thing we could do, we can go back here. There's voltages for each of these. All right, so we can see that the EC2 sensor voltage is just about 10% higher than the voltage on ECT1. We know from our basic electrical, this is telling us one thing that could possibly be a problem would be like a bad ground or something like that where we are increasing resistance more than what the sensor itself should be doing. And therefore we are increasing that voltage and getting this incorrect interpretation. That is a possibility. I think what I'm going to do, it looked to me like these sensors are exactly the same. I think the easiest thing to do is let's just get a resistance reading on the sensors. I think that'll be the easiest thing to do. I suppose I could also check the ground, check your grounds on the sensors as well, but I think it's going to be a little more accurate to just get resistance readings on these sensors. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to turn this car off. All right. It's just given the location of these sensors, it's easier not to try to back probe and stuff. So let's see, we've got, uh, Four, just about 4,000 ohms on that sensor right there. That was the sensor that was clearly replaced. Let's get an ohm reading on the second sensor. I am pretty sure we're going to read a higher ohms reading on it. Let's get our DVOM there and let's see if I can get this sensor down here probed. Uh, let's see, um, five. 1,477 ohms. Okay, obviously that is our issue. Um, sorry about that, guys. I thought we were going to have a really cool thing chasing down the ground. Uh, we clearly just have a bad sensor here. The electrical is fine. The sensor has too high of resistance. So let me go grab a sensor for this thing. And let me also talk to the customer about uh, what I found here because it's a little interesting. The shop charged them for both sensors. All right, got new sensor here. We're just going to measure this new sensor real quick and make sure it isn't 5,000 something ohms. By the way, I did contact the customer and I asked them about this. A uh, little misinformation there. They did not replace both ECTs. They replaced the ECT twice. Big difference there. So I guess they thought they got a bad part out of the box or something, not realizing there are two sensors on this vehicle. Um, well, not sure what to say about that, but let's measure this. It measures about 4,000 ohms, just exactly hang on let me get this a little more stable but i think you saw that that is exactly the reading we got on the other sensor yeah it's just like a couple of hundredths of ohms difference but also remember we've got a little bit of change in temperature uh, with one sensor out of the vehicle as well so let me go ahead and put this sensor in and this car should be fixed we'll need to verify uh, not only with the cold temperature test but also remember we may possibly have some other issues with this system so we will need to get the car warmed up make sure we check the performance of everything okay if we look here we are good to go temperatures match exactly with the new sensor 2 installed all right got this car started here uh wow within just about 
maybe 20 seconds, not even that. We already have a massive difference between the sensors. Again, this is expected because the thermostat hasn't opened yet. If I touch this upper radiator hose near sensor one, that feels about room temperature. The lower hose feels ice cold. So once that thermostat opens, we should start seeing a change in that sensor too. We'll come back in a little bit after this warms up. Uh, incidentally, the fact that we're warming up really quickly here like that really is indicating there aren't other issues with the cooling system. Open thermostat, for example, we wouldn't be seeing this. And uh, the other thing too that we know is because those temperatures read exactly the same, the voltages would be the same. So we don't need to check things like the five volt reference, bad ground, something like that. So let's get this up to temperature a little bit. And uh, once that thermostat opens, we should start seeing a change on number two. All right, we're trying to warm up here by holding the throttle down about 3000 RPM. Uh, we see we uh, have no check engine light, had to clear that check engine light. Introduced a couple of codes, of course, for the open circuits when I was doing my testing there. Uh, we see we are adding up temperature here. But if we look over here, yeah, we're starting to get change on ECT2 now. Just keep going here for a minute, but I'm pretty happy with this. This car is fixed.